everybody and welcome to Northern Land Tries Draconoid. This is a game that uh, came out a couple of days ago on Steam and was immediately on my radar because it's kind of, uh, it's in the wheelhouse of stuff that I tend to like. It's a game mechanic that everybody's already familiar with, in this case Breakout, also known as Arkanoid, which I've never really thought about it, but I realized that upon pontificating mentally for this video, Breakout is really just Pong but single player, right? It's like your friend who had a, a, a ping pong table, whenever there was nobody to play with, they switch it from Pong to Breakout. Anyway, that was me bending my elbow at 90 degrees. Um, it's that plus an inversion, and the inversion of the mechanic in this case is instead of just having a paddle that you move left to right, you uh, draw the paddle yourself. As a result, you could put an angle on it, you could put it in the exact position you want. Um, it seems kind of interesting. This is developer code provided. If you give me a second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the price tag on Steam. On Steam, Draconoid is on sale right now. I, th I think it's like seven American. It's $8 Canadian, $9 full price, but it's 10% off for its opening week sale. All right, so there's some context for you. All right, so use your mouse to draw. This is my first game, by the way. Use your mouse to draw a paddle. Let's, oh, I see. Okay, what if we do it like this? What if we really try to mess with it? Use your mouse to draw a paddle. So I know like the, the shots come out nearly instantly. And then you have a little window of time with which to use bullet time to try to, uh, you know, make it through. You know what I mean? Hold on. You might know what I mean, you might, you might not know what I mean. All of that is fair. I don't necessarily think I'm doing a great job of explaining it. It can be done. What am I even trying to hit here? Oh, it's coming back. I think I guess I'm uh, trying to hit the shapes. <laughs> oh, or maybe those uh, those caution signs up there. Hold on. You're doing great, sweetie. Whatever you want to hit right now is is acceptable. Oh, has he done it? Now there's just a creature on the screen. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, I see. Those are like probably your bullets you're sending down to make my life harder. Okay, so it, the the game takes place, uh, I guess, in these. Let's think about this for a second. It takes place on uh, these levels. So instead of being like, I guess that's true of Breakout as well. You always had levels in Breakout. You know, I'm I'm not old, but this should give you some indication of how much times have changed. Even like as late as 12 and 13 years old. I was still paying 25 cents at like the bowling alley arcade for a round of breakout. And I was happy to do so. Were there more advanced games? Yeah, but honestly, like the more advanced games, some of them were a little stinky. You know what I mean? It, usually, for one, you want to play something with a light gun, like, like Area 51. Oh my god. It's already gonna cost you. Like that's a that's a one dollar play, and then the game's not that good to begin with. Give me the arcadey goodness of a breakout. So the other thing that I know uh, happens in this game is that oh I shot it down. <laughs> there are um, power ups, which I believe will show up in those like three right slots over there that are presently unoccupied. I have no uh, access to those as of yet. But I've seen in like the developer's tweets that there are ones, you know, like uh, like homing shots, for example. Which is kind of like, I, I hesitate to say that it's roguelite-ish. Because I, I feel like at its... Oh, I'm a fool. Oh, you can like name and tweet a GIF afterwards. That's No wonder they've been tweeting so many freaking GIFs. <laughs> They've got a gift maker in their game. They're from the Zactronic School of Design. Boss Gold, Chain Combo. That's all we can really afford. Um, sure, let's buy uh, Boss Gold. Upgrade. You earn 15 triangles every time you beat a boss. Okay. Fair enough. Understood. Can I... Oh, that's a permanent 
thing so we don't put it in our loadout. Okay, let's try again. I will say, can I can I tell you, I have one concern for this game, and I'm eager to see how it um, how it handles it. I'm from, a, and I'm not a, a game designer, but I think critically about game design because I make these videos. The first thing that pops into my head about a game like this where you can slow down... Just give me a restart on that one. This is going to sound ironic in just a moment. Um, in a game like this where time essentially slows down to allow you to place the paddle almost exactly where you want to place it, how do you get the level of difficulty? And I recognize the irony that I died early on there, but it is also my first uh, game, you know? It feels like, you know, in Breakout, the difficulty comes from uh, speed, basically. You know, the ball starts moving too fast, and the only other thing that's really hard in Breakout, well, there's, I guess, like, two other things. One is, if you hit something unexpectedly, sometimes, you know, you, you get yourself in a, a... It's like air hockey. When they send a shot at you super fast, you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, the other thing is, like, if it's about to hit a corner or something like that. Um, but in this, obviously, the, the difficulty must come from, like, a different source, you know what I mean? Because it could be a similar source, but at the same time, like, it's, it's pretty easy to, uh, stay alive here as long as you're not talking simultaneously, I think. But we'll see. I'm not saying it is a design fly. What I'm merely saying is that I'm interested to see how they deal with that. That being said, I did die in like two minutes on our first try. Certainly, without a doubt, a very visually appealing uh, game. It, it feels like, and I, I use this comparison a lot because, you know, it's it's the environment I, I came up in. But it feels like one of those like puppy games, games, which were all like, hey, what if we took like an arcade classic? and made it a little bit more modernized and also a little bit more neon. And that, I mean, we're looking at it right here, you know what I mean? Okay, the breakout strat, the classic breakout strat. You get it ricocheting as fast as possible off one of the walls. Careful. <laughs> Careful. Oh, that see that in regular breakout that would have crushed us. You try to yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it going laterally, a little side to side. You know what I mean? It's definitely a neat idea for a game. I don't even mean that in the way that it might sound, which is like... It comes across as kind of patronizing. But, uh... In like 2012, games like this were coming out all the time. It was a glory day. We didn't even know it. Like the Bruce Springsteen song. Nowadays, feels much rarer. If there's anything, and we're not even talking about Draconoid at this point. But if there's anything I've noticed, and it has only been like a month or, well, probably two months now. Um, doing these Northern Lion tries on Steam. I very much miss the preponderance and high frequency of like, smaller, more minimalistic indie games. It feels like... What we get a, a ton of now are games that are smaller than a small indie game from 2012. I.e. like a, a, a single person team making like a, a pretty jank looking platformer or, you know, first person shooter from the Unity Asset Store, etc, etc. Um, or alternatively like super, uh, like triple I indie stuff like, uh, like Temtem. I got no problem with either, but... I like a game like this that occupies that middle area as well. Now, by the way, trust me, I recognize I... I didn't say the game's too easy. I said I'm interested to see how they deal with the difficulty problem. And the answer is, uh... By the player, which is me, not being very good. <laughs> I'm hoping... We can pick up, like, we have 115 gold. Even if we lose here, we should be able to buy some new stuff. I love how I'm talking in the cadence of, like, when the bullets are here, I talk slower, and when they're up at the top, I actually get a chance to form, like, a coherent sentence. Um, help. Very spiced. 
He's done it, though. And we did just get an achievement. So we must have made it to, like, a <laughs> past level 3. It's a new biome. Hold on. Uh, we should be able to get new stuff, is what I'm trying to say. There we go. We hit a vein on that one. I will say, uh, I, I have one... Not, uh, not necessarily a negative. But, like... This happens a lot in games that have a, a similar kind of... Uh, sell, I think. I have to focus so much on what's happening on the bottom half of the board um, that I don't really see what's happening on the top half of the board. Like, I'm singularly focused on keeping myself alive and not really concerning myself with any kind of, like, strategy on the top level. It's possible that kind of strategy will reveal itself... Oh, I'm a fool. Will reveal itself after, like, more play. Maybe you can start to pay attention to both boards. For now, I'm like, I, I, I can't pay attention to it. Or I feel like I can't pay attention to it. Power-ups need to be equipped to be used. Upgrades permanently change the game. Wide paddle allows you to draw longer paddles. Do we lose it after one game? Or maybe we pay for it every time, which I guess is functionally like the same thing. Okay, let's give it a try. We got a wide paddle now. Just trying to resist the temptation to say, if you know what I mean. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll uh, do a quick restart on this one. Oh, we still got the wide paddle. <laughs> yeah, I guess I never finished, uh, like, what happened, hold on, what happens if you hit the, the, the caution? What happens if you, it's the only one I have not hit. What happens if you hit that little caution triangle? I thought maybe it did damage in an AoE. Destroyed multiple blocks. I don't know. What I was gonna say earlier, and I didn't finish my train of thought, is I hesitate to call it a roguelite. Because I think that... I mean, if I were a smarter marketer of my own content, I probably would. Because just putting roguelite in the thumbnail is like, you know, plus 5,000 views. But, uh... Oh, I wonder if you kill all the triangles. It opens up boss access or so. Yeah, that seems most sensible to me. Okay. Um, I hope that's true, because I just had like a eureka moment. And if it's not the way that it works, I'm going to look like an absolute fool. Um, but they're not really... It's It doesn't really feel roguelike-ish. It's just that there's power-ups. But now, like, whenever I get a power-up in a game, I'm like, oh, this is Isaac. <laughs> no. Not really. The, the dirty little secret is you're like, every run's different. Yeah, well, like, you know, almost every run of every game is different. Uh, except for, like, you know, super linear stuff, you know, narrative-driven, no-branching-path kind of, like, stories and adventure games. But, like, I'm trying to avoid the over... The suggestion that absolutely everything I play is a roguelite just because it has, you know, like... You know, it can be played in an hour and, uh doesn't have cutscenes. <laughs> anyway. We've waxed philosophical. We haven't talked that much about how I'm feeling about Draconoid. To be honest, it's it's mildly positive. Um, and I hope that doesn't come across as a backhanded compliment. But, like, it, it's kind of... What you see is what you get, you know? Um, by, by playing a little bit more of it, I still think maybe I'm missing some kind of like higher order strategy. But it is an interesting wrinkle in the in the breakout formula. And, you know, I, I already like breakout because I'm a 100-year-old grandpa. So adding a little extra to it, you know, that that's enough for me. But I will say, you know, like, there have been some games I've played for Northern Lion Tries where like, you know, Demon Crawl I think is the best example. Where I looked at it and I said, okay, it's like a, a, a Minesweeper clone. But after playing it for like 20 minutes, I was really impressed with the the depth of like emerging gameplay that came out of that. So far, I'm not having that and I'm hoping maybe like power-ups will, will take it to the next level for me. But as of right now, that remains, uh, that remains in, in Play Dead's most popular title, Limbo. Although, Inside is also very good as well. I'm a fool. Look, at this channel, we respect both of Play Dead's magnum opuses, okay? It's the best run we've ever had, that's for sure. 
But yeah, just in general, like, I'm always happy to see games like this on Steam. Not just because we're, you know, and the developers are probably watching. If you're not familiar with the context of Northern Lion Tries, January has been a very dry month for stuff that is appropriate for this series. This, on the other hand, is very appropriate. Like a mid-scoped uh, indie game with very easily accessible mechanics. Uh, plus, it is not a an anime-inspired visual novel, which sets it apart from about 85% of Steam's new releases on a daily basis. And opens it up to uh, me potentially being able to play it. <laughs> Yeah, so we got it. Once you hit the triangles or the you hit all the the marked pieces, you get the ability to actually fight the boss. I understand. I will say that's still like I mean, again, we've only played for 15 minutes, but that's like where I'm at right now. If I have one criticism, it's that, uh, and it's kind of baked into the design uh, conceit of the game, right? Being forced to look at the bottom so much. That's pretty sweet, though. <laughs> Uh, means that I'm not paying attention to all the fun stuff happening at the top. And for me, half of the joy in Breakout is when you manage to thread the needle and get the ball into like that one seam where it just ricochets off of everything and, and puts you in an incredible position, you know? Oh. Maybe not an incredible position. It's not like it's an esports event, but you get what I mean. So I'm getting very distracted by the, what you might hear in the background, which is endless meowing. My son has become very, very needy, which is fine. He is a cat, and uh, and I love him. But I he always waits till like I start talking. If he just meowed like this when I, you know, wasn't talking, it's no big deal at all. I say, my son, come here. Are you ready to inherit the empire? But when it, he waits till I start talking, there's nothing I could do because if I go open up the door, he's gonna you know, run in and like, we had that thing in a 60 seconds episode that maybe has not gone up yet where Tomo like unplugged my headphones in the middle of the game and then I was like, oh, I don't even know if the audio is recording anymore. Boomer reaction times to the extreme. Okay, let's see what else we got. We got piercing shots. It's an active. Charges by 25 wall bounces. Ball pierces through the first two blocks after hitting the paddle. Let's put that on there and try it. And then, what's chain combo? Combo rewards for breaking 10 or more bricks in a single sequence. Sure. Well, I mean... Put that on there as well. Alright. So, it's, it seems... Uh, there, there are different loadouts, but it does also seem like it's one of those uh, games that's a little bit more progressive. Like, you unlock stuff that gives you a, a permanent benefit as well. 25 wall bounces. There we go. So, I... <laughs> I don't necessarily, you know, like, you're playing with fire, I guess is what I'm trying to say when I do this. But to be fair, to have a paddle, or to have the ball pierce two bricks potentially opens up, like, huge combo. Or huge combos, I should say. Do you have to click on it to use it? You do. Okay. Oh, and it, it keeps going for a length of time. I thought it might only work for one shot, and I, I will admit, temporarily, I was a little bit underwhelmed. Yikes. When you start drawing in the wrong direction, cancel Christmas. Okay, now, <laughs> charge up your active. Feels weird to be, like, min-maxing breakout like this, but... I keep going for like the funky plays instead of just taking the the straight easy money and I am I am basically an idiot. I'm basically a dumb fool. This is like a super um uh, it was probably not necessary, huh? This is a super weird compliment, but I also really like games that take place on like a vertical playing field. I feel like most oh my god. <laughs> Most of my, my digital life takes place very horizontally. Uh, a, a board oriented in, uh, in portrait in, instead of landscape, you know? It sounds strange, maybe, but it, it's, uh, it's a breath of fresh air. Okay, at least live through three levels. That's all I could ever ask. 
Let's see if we can sneak it. Did not sneak it. No sneaks. Really taking advantage of this wide paddle, as you can see. <laughs> Drawing, for whatever reason, the smallest possible lines. I will say, I don't know, I, I don't think there's an advantage for this, or it hasn't been elucidated in the game to, to my knowledge so far. But what if they gave you a bonus for, for uh, drawing the smallest paddles possible? And a penalty for drawing the largest paddles possible? I deflected the ball back at myself. I'm bad! Anyway, this is uh, Draw Cadenoid. Captain Eggman has 175 triangles, and you know, what, after 20 minutes, what I said at the start of the video seems to hold pretty true for the end of the video, to be honest. Um, it's an inversion on an arcade formula. If you're not into that arcade formula to begin with, it's probably not for you. And uh, even on top of that, does it add in, right now, enough of a layer to be like truly transformative? I would say, not really. But, it makes up for that aesthetically, presentationally, and it sounds minor, but like easily shareable cool gifts. It's something I support, you know, ever since I, I saw it in like Opus Magnum. Um, so yeah, I think this is pretty cool. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Check out Draw Cadenoid on Steam. There will be a link in the video description below. Thank them for their key as well. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!